in today's video, John's going to be showing you how he pots up plug plants. He's going to be potting up two module trays and the interesting selection of plants he's chosen for you today was supplied by a lovely lady up the road, Claire Pierce of Coombe Dingle Nursery, and I've put her details in the description below. Welcome to John Horsey Horticulture. John's been teaching horticulture professionally for over 30 years now and on this channel we're hoping to help you develop your gardening skills. Whether you're new to gardening and looking for some basic foundations on propagation techniques, growing some seeds, a little bit of pest control, or whether you're a seasoned horty who could always use some tips and advice. If you like learning those things do consider following us by pushing the subscribe button, there's no charge. And don't forget to push the all important notification bell, it just lets you know every time we upload a new video. Good morning everybody, how are we? Hope we're all well today. Um, I've been out shopping over the weekend and I've decided that rather than sow seeds or take cuttings this year I'm going to buy plug plants and they're very reasonable and they come in little trays like this it does save you all the trouble of having to take a cutting or to sow a seed and to save it out obviously a little bit more expensive but depends on how many you want I suppose a small number suits me really well so they come like this they're they're obviously in a very small plug of of compost which isn't going to keep them going very long so we have to uh, pop them on as quickly as possible now um, I've got a, a general purpose fertilizer here which uh, is, is a mixture of various um, bits and pieces ma mainly compost because I'm trying to avoid using peat a bit of grit in it it is probably a bit short on nutrients so I'm just going to put a few um, few of the you know the multi continuous release plant food the multi-purpose food in um, just scatter it in and, and, and now mix that into the compost now this is a, a pretty wonderful stuff because it's it's got some um, all the nutrients if, if you look on the base on the back it's got all the nutrients it's got and running down here I've got um, nitrogen uh, phosphorus uh, potassium magnesium boron copper iron manganese molybdenum uh, zinc I think that's practically all the, all the nutrients that we think of for plants and the beauty of these these little prills are that they they actually release the they release the nutrients over a period of time they won't start to um, give off the nutrients until they're wet uh, and then the rate of release is affected by temperature so they're pretty amazing little things really um, when we had the nursery they were very useful because I could put these into a compost and I knew that it would feed the plants for a long time so if you were selling a plant you, know, you knew that plant didn't want any food for a while so I'm just putting a little bit of this in to get it going so I've mixed it all in um, they're nicely coloured so you can see that it's pretty well uh, mixed in so, uh, don't need an awful lot of it so there we are now I've got the compost all mixed up nicely um, I'm going to put these into little little trays. I know I'm trying to reduce single-use plastic, but I've got these. I don't want to buy any more. Might as well use them when I've got them. So it's, it's, it's a simple matter, really, of filling this up nice and uh, gently over the top. I mean, everything about these plugs is, is straightforward and simple. Um, the whole process is very easy. So here we are, leveled it off like that. And um, I just pull them out, they come out very very easily, a little plug complete I've kept these quite nice and moist, you can see the roots are growing away there so that wants to get in there fairly quickly get a hole, push it down and you're away the ones I'm starting with here, these are what's called bratchy scum it's like, it's sometimes called the Swan River Daisy a little uh, blue daisy flowers for a very long period and uh, so I'm going to get those going and later on they'll be just the thing for popping into pots and containers to give a bit of a interest uh, throughout the uh, throughout the season so that's all the bratty scum not all the bratty scum but that's what we're, we're starting with um, as you know I'd rather use my finger than a little dibber but it's up to you if you want to use a dibber that's fair enough it's a nice little plant look at that one it's got a nice little shoots on it got a nice little nursery up the road lady called Claire Pierce who does wonderful plants and things I'm popping there to get all my stuff, she's really good right so I've got my ten bratty scums in there uh, I've also got five of this little fellow which is a lotus, it's quite an interesting little plant um, it grows wild in Tenerife and it's, uh, it's actually endangered in Tenerife but it's quite widely grown as a house as a, as a, as a pot plant 
in this country. So I've got five of those as well. They're going to go in there. Uh, I can see what they are because they're completely different vegetation. Um, it isn't going to be too long before I have to move these on actually. They're going to grow quite quickly. But uh, it's probably better to do it slowly and let them, let them make their, their growth as they go along. So that's the, um, the lotus. And the other one I've got here, which I'm going to put in, um, there's a whole load of Sabatius. You may know me and recognise that one. Little blue, light blue sort of thing. And it spreads all over the, uh, you know, in a container or something. It really makes a lovely show. So I put those in as well. So I'll put those there. Sasha Convolvius, which of course is the name most people will be frightened of because you think that was the, uh, the, the uh, bindweed, the, the garden weed. But um, some Convolvuluses are well behaved. So there we are, now I need to label them and um, I've got a label for the convolvulus, I'll put a date on there later. I'll label the others in a minute or two. Now I'm going to put on these uh, Calibrachoa. Um, they're a cute little thing. Um, there's, the one I've got here is called Strawberry Star. Um, they're like mini petunias, they're really rather nice. I've got some red ones here, I've got some yellow ones and some uh, white ones. Um, I'm not really too worried about them. Um, how, how the colours are, so we'll uh, just pop them on now. See, they've come in these little 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 plantlets. They're they're brilliant. It's all all there. They're uh, nice and moist. The roots are really well established. Um, that's a smaller one. Let's have a look at a bigger one. Uh, in fact, the roots are starting to go round and round to the bottom, and there they're starting to come out through the bottom. So they need to go in pretty quickly. So we'll just uh, fill up our seed tray. It's nice and even. Don't pack it down too much because you'll um, not be able to get the plant in otherwise. Just need it nice and loose because if you look at that root it's going to take quite a bit of that little little module. So here we are, we'll start on this row here which are the yellow ones and we'll just start making a little hole your finger, pop them in and they're done. It's, it's so easy, you know, it uh, saves all the trouble of, of sowing seed and pricking them out. Uh, a little bit more expensive but you say it all depends on how many you want, doesn't it? Those are Calibrachoa. They're like, let's say, like little little mini mini um, petunias. They're they're lovely little things. They're very good. But the other thing I really do love are the Sanvitalias. They sometimes call them creeping zinnias. They're little yellow flowers, and they just flower on and on all year. And you can see they're slightly different, different plants. They're a bit smaller. Well, they're not quite so well grown, but they'll soon catch up. So I'm gonna let's say put them in here. They'll go in the warmth and they'll soon be catching up. Yeah, they're, 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 they're okay, but they're not, not as big rooted as the Calibrachoas. I've kept them nice and moist, so I think it's important this time of year. The important thing now, of course, is to give it a jolly good watering, keep it somewhere light, but not, not too bright, warm, they don't want to frost or anything like that and then in a month's time they'll be a decent size and we'll, um, we might, well, we'll see how the weather goes but we'll certainly be thinking about putting them outside maybe with a bit of protection. Okay. Well thank you so much for joining us here today in Somerset. We've really enjoyed having you. If you like that and would like to follow us do push the subscribe button. There's no charge. Ding the notification bell. It lets you know every time we upload a new video. In the meantime, enjoy your week. Until next time.